Hello, I'm Sarah, the Education Manager for the American Independence Museum. Today we'll be reading a short story about the revolution and then doing an activity afterwards. Due to the coronavirus and all of us trying to do our part to stop the spread, I'm actually recording here in my home versus a museum. Now I hope you are ready to enjoy a nice story. Gingerbread for Liberty, How a German Baker Helped Win the American Revolution by Mara Rockcliffe, pictures by Vincent X. Kirsch. Everyone in Philadelphia knew the gingerbread baker, his honest face, his booming laugh, and of course his gingerbread, the best in all the 13 colonies. His big flowery hands turned out castles and queens, horses and cows and hens, each detail drawn in sweet buttery icing with the greatest skill and care. And yet, despite his care, there always seemed to be some broken pieces for the hungry children who followed their noses to the spicy smelling shop. No empty bellies the be here, the baker bellowed, not in my America. For once upon a time, he had been young and hungry too, and he had followed his nose to this new world where a hardworking young man could open his own bakery and always have enough to eat. But now something was in the air besides the smell of baking gingerbread. Newspapers shouted, revolution, independence, liberty. Boys rolled up blankets, shouldered guns, and kissed their mothers goodbye. The baker hung his apron up, dusted off the flour off his hands. Where are you going? asked his wife. To fight for my America, he said. I was a soldier once. That was a long time ago and far away, she said. You are a baker now, and you are old and fat. The baker knew his wife was right. Besides, he also knew he loved his country. Somehow, he had to find a way to help. He packed his bags and went to join General Washington. General Washington did not say the baker was old and fat. General Washington was too polite. Anyway, he had other troubles on his mind. The men are thinking of leaving. They say the food is terrible and there isn't enough of it. The baker rolled up his sleeves. No empty bellies here, he told General Washington, not in my America. But bigger troubles were on the way. Across the ocean, the King of England wrote to other rulers and hired their armies to help him squash the revolution. Your Majesty, the Americans think they can beat us redcoats. Ha 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 ha. What if they're right? Ha <laughs> ha. Huh? When ships sailed into sight, even General Washington turned pale. Who had ever seen such an army? Not me, not me, definitely not me. I have. These soldiers come from the land where I was born, the baker told General Washington. Let me go speak to them. Perhaps I can persuade them that we are not their enemies. Perhaps I can even persuade them to switch sides. If you are caught, you will be killed, Washington warned. The baker smiled, but I will not be caught. In the darkest hour of the night, he rode across the bay. With each dip of his oars, he thought of words to win the soldiers over to the American cause. Revolution, splash. Bufrayon, independence, splash. Unabhinishkeit, liberty, splash, splash. Freiheit. But when he looked into their hungry faces, all his fine words slipped away. What could he say? I have a bake shop, he began. As the baker spoke, the soldiers seemed to see the fragrant steam rising from his ovens. They could almost smell the spicy gingerbread and taste the sweet buttery icing on their tongues. And you always have enough to eat, the soldiers asked. No empty bellies here, the baker told them, not in my America. Across the ocean, your majesty, we just don't understand. These higher armies seem to disappear. Many, many loaves and battles later, the British have surrendered, the revolution is over, we won. My work is done, the baker cried. Washington said, not quite. A gift from General Washington. Did the baker bake the British soldiers gingerbread for their dessert? We'll never know. They didn't leave a crumb.
Before we get started with our craft today, which we'll be doing a painting, I want to tell you a little bit more about the gentleman who inspired this story, Mr. Christopher Ludwig. He was a German citizen who joined the army as a young man and then became a sailor and traveled all across the world, baking in various countries. When he was in his 30s, he decided to settle in the city of Philadelphia in 1754. It was there that he married his wife and became the well-known gingerbread maker that we know in the story. Not only was he known for being a great gingerbread maker, but as the story tells us, he was also known for being a kind and generous man. He believed very strongly in education and actually used some of his own money to pay for students who couldn't afford to go to school. He felt it was very important to be a citizen, a good citizen to your country, and become civically engaged. So with that in mind, I thought we could create our art today as good citizens. Since we're all home doing our part to prevent the spread of the virus, we create our artwork to make cards for neighbors and friends and family who might be stuck inside and a little bit lonely. With that in mind, after you create your piece of art, ask your grown-ups if they can bring you to someone's mailbox where you can deliver your card. But of course, we wanna practice safe hygiene, so sanitize your hands before and after. And the type of artwork we're going to be doing today to create our card is called resistance painting. And that's what the illustrator used here when they were creating the images for this book. All of these white lines with the coloring in between is what is called resistance. So simply taking something that resists or repels the ink or the paint away is what creates these lines. And that's what we're going to be doing today. I think also the illustrator was trying to emulate or copy what the designs were of the gingerbread that Mr. Ludwig was making. So today when we make our gingerbread, we use a cookie cutter and then take white icing and draw our details on. Mr. Ludwig actually used a mold or a stamp to create his gingerbread, which was what was very common for people to do during the American Revolution in the colonial times, especially German immigrants. And then he would trace those white lines to give the details for his gingerbread. So with that in mind, we'll get started with our resistance painting. Let's get started with our resistance painting. So since we're going to be making cards today, you just take your piece of paper, obviously, and fold it in half. We can do two different options. You can do a crayon or white glue. We'll start with the crayon because it's the most simple. So wherever you draw with the crayon, the paint will be repelled. Just going to draw a flower funny looking flower and then we add our paint and you can see that the paint is being repelled by the wax, creating those white lines. So that's how you can do it. With a crayon. You can also use white craft glue. So you simply take your glue, draw your picture, let it dry, and when it dries you apply your paint. And again you can see that it's repelling the paint. Depending on how thick you do the glue or how watery or thick you do the paint will depend on how uh, much it's repelled. But it's quite simple and you can experiment with detailed or simple designs to create your own masterpiece. 